Preparations for the garage sale began on Wednesday evening with Kathy, my mom, Beth, and me working diligently. We spent late hours sorting and pricing items, readying ourselves for the sale on Friday, extending to Saturday if necessary. Each item held sentimental value, making it difficult to part with. Memories flooded back as we cleared out room after room, the house growing quieter with each emptied space. The master bedroom, filled with reminders of our past adventures, proved the most challenging to declutter. Each article of clothing and accessory carried memories of shared moments, making it hard to let go. Despite the emotional toll, we pressed on, aided by occasional breaks and snacks from mom. The kitchen, filled with excess cookware, only served to remind me of the limited space in my new apartment. By the time we finished, the garage was packed with neatly stacked boxes. Dad and his friends, dressed in full law enforcement attire, were stationed strategically to deter theft. Mom took charge of managing the cash register, while Beth entertained and engaged potential buyers with her charm and wit. As dawn broke on Friday, I set up tables and tents outside, greeted by eager early birds hoping for bargains. Beth arrived with donuts, and soon after, Mom and Dad joined us. Despite the official start time being disregarded due to the growing crowd, we dove into the sale with enthusiasm. Dad's friend handled the jewelry and antiques with finesse, captivating the attention of curious shoppers. Meanwhile, neighboring families also set up their own sales, and we exchanged pleasantries with them. Amidst the bustling activity, Darcy, a neighbor's friend, arrived just before 8 a.m., adding to the lively atmosphere. As the day progressed, we navigated through the steady stream of visitors, each item finding a new home, and each sale marking the beginning of a new chapter for us. Hey Chad, what's happening here? Morning, Darcy. Just a little garage sale action. Yeah, I get that. Dean mentioned you guys were clearing out some stuff. Yep, that's the plan. And we're off to a good start, sold a few items already, and it's not even 8 a.m. She didn't mention anything about selling furniture, though. Guess she left out the details. Sorry, gotta get back to it. Happy shopping. Darcy seemed annoyed at being brushed off. She and Deanne often think they're in control of everything. It wasn't a shock when my phone buzzed a few minutes later. Hey, Chad, can you talk? Hey, Deanne. Kinda swamped with the garage sale. We're managing fine without you. Chad, Darcy told me you've got the whole front yard filled with clothes and furniture. You gotta be quick to outsmart Darcy. Yeah, things are moving fast. Catch you later. Don't you DA, as I ended the call. That was the first call. I let the rest go to voicemail, one after the other. You get the idea. Speaking of pictures, I took them off the walls. Damn, those frames were worth way more than my asking prices. Mom mentioned Deanne called, but she ignored it. She handed me an envelope with 500 bucks, and it was only 815. Looking around, it seemed like the shoppers barely made a dent. Every time a table cleared, Beth would unload another box. The road was chaotic. Someone was trying to maneuver their pickup truck next to our driveway to load a dresser. Another 500 for Mom. Some lady was trying on shoes like it was her last chance. Looked like she was taking a couple hundred dollars worth. And I was worried about selling them. Deanne called, and I figured it was time to ruffle her feathers again. Hello? Don't play dumb with me. Darcy says you're selling my clothes and shoes. She's quite the observer. You weren't supposed to touch my stuff. My bad. I thought you said to get rid of the ugly things, so I'm doing just that. Yep, you even wrote it down. I meant your sweaters. The ones that you think are cute but are just childish. Should have been clearer. It says get rid of ugly clothes. Your wedding dress sold, by the way. You know, the one that made you look pregnant. You're impossible, Chad. What's gotten into you? Just following orders. Most of your jeans are gone. You always thought they made you a but look big. Personally, I don't think it was the jeans, but they won't bother you anymore. Why are you doing this to me? That's a rhetorical question, right? Gotta run, 
the lady buying your shoes is ready to check out. Catch you later as I tap the end call button. Wednesday morning, earlier that week, enough already. I've attended all of our garage sales, I replied calmly. You might have been here, Chad, but I did all the planning. I'm just trying to make sure things go smoothly for you. My wife, Deanne, was micromanaging our upcoming community garage sale. The HOA limited us to two events per year, one in spring and one in late summer. We participated more for the community involvement than the money made. It was nice to declutter and get rid of things that no longer mattered in our lives. This time, Deanne wouldn't be around. She was traveling to Cleveland to hopefully close a merger deal. I think this was her fourth trip there in three months. She wasn't an attorney but worked in the legal department of her corporation. I've got six pages of instructions here. I'll have help. My parents and Beth said they'd be here. I think Mom is only doing it to spend time with Beth. I just wrote things down as I thought of them. I'm just trying to help, you know. Give me the list. I just thought of another thing. Get rid of those ugly clothes. Whatever. I'm not a petulant child. We won't get top dollar for everything, and yes, some things will get pilfered. It happens every time we do one of these. I'll keep the good stuff under glass. You keep checking your phone. What's up? I'm just checking the Uber and LYFT rates. They change constantly. There, see, I just saved $10. They'll be here in 15 minutes. Can I have a hug before I leave? Or more if you'd like. I'll send you off to the home of the 1964 NFL champions with a smile on your face. I managed to grope and fondle Deanne as she giggled to get away. Leave me alone, you pervert. Have it your way. Safe travels. Deanne was out the door in a flash as soon as the rideshare arrived. We were acting more and more like work associates than a married couple. What's that saying? You can observe a lot just by looking. Deanne and I had been to a graduation party. The stress of the merger was getting to her, and she probably should have stopped drinking a few drinks ago. On the ride home, she started rubbing my pants, which my little head didn't ignore. Well, well, looks like somebody's ready for action. Pedal to the metal, Chad, from my drunk wife. I hurried, and we arrived intact. Once inside, we discarded clothes as we headed to the bedroom. Deanne pushed me onto my back and started giving me head. Very good head, too. I relaxed and enjoyed it. Suddenly, she stopped, scooted up, and plopped down on my rigid member in one quick motion. She was all lubed up. At least I managed to hang on until she had an orgasm. Then I let loose and drained my balls. With Deanne fast asleep, I replayed the last 20 minutes in my mind. She never initiates sex, and the only time I get any is on my birthday, with more hand action than anything else. Afterward, she rushes to the bathroom and uses mouthwash a couple of times. Quite romantic, right? So what was tonight all about? She hadn't left my side all evening at the party. If it wasn't me who awakened this different sexual partner, then who? Something's fishy, and my guess is it's happening in Cleveland. So when the next trip to Cleveland was announced, I alerted my somewhat expensive investigator of her itinerary. No public displays of affection. But my guy had put motion-activated cameras in every hallway of the four-story hotel Deanne was staying at. She actually did a good job of diversion. She'd come out of her room, get on the elevator, and go buy something in the lobby. Then she'd return to her floor but let herself into a different room. In the wee hours of the morning, she'd return to her room. Ball game. Noon Saturday, Deanne's parents showed up. Hank kept them on the sidewalk, so I came over to visit with them. Chad, what are you doing selling all of this stuff? Deanne said it was supposed to be only a few card tables of items. Guess she isn't very good with math. She said you're not answering her calls. Not true. I've spoken to her a few times already this morning. Well, she says you hang up on her and then ignore her repeated attempts to call back. Why don't you call her and tell her to tell David he'd better watch his back? David? Who's David? Apparently, he's somebody she's been seeing on her road trips. 
Got pictures if you want proof. I know I wanted proof. What proof? Her father snapped at me. Here's a picture. Keep it as I have plenty to share. It's dated this morning at 4.21 a.m. Notice how she's barefoot, carrying her bra and heels with her blouse untucked. That's David's room she's coming out of. Stutter, stutter, stutter as the words were slow to formulate. But you can't sell all of her stuff. Hey, I've got six pages of instructions on how to run a successful garage sale. Hold on, I think I need to resolve an issue Kathy seems to be having. Go ahead, give Deanne a call. Somebody was haggling about the price on some of Deanne's grandmother's furniture. I wanted it gone, but the stuff was Gustav Stickley's circa 1910, so it was worth a bunch. We finally agreed on a thousand for the bookcase, table, and two side chairs. They got it for about 25 cents on the dollar. It was something I wanted gone as it meant so much to Deanne. If her hand-me-down jewelry sold, it'd turn out to be a great day. Returning to Deanne's parents, they had tears in their eyes and looked defeated. My phone buzzed, but it was just Deanne. She says she loves you, Chad. Can't you two work something out, her mother pleaded. I am working something out. We're getting rid of everything, and I'm moving to my own apartment. She can play house here with David if she can afford the mortgage payments. They shuffled away, wiping tears as they leaked. I felt sorry for them, as we always seemed to get along. Deanne called again, so I answered. Hey, how's it going? I'm sorry. Please stop the garage sale. I wish you could see how the strangers are sorting through what's left of you and me. Oh, God. Well, you said to get rid of ugly things, and everything you wear makes you look like one ugly conniving bitch, so I priced him to move. By the way, how is David? Deanne didn't immediately respond, so I ended the call. By 2 p.m., with an hour to go, the furniture and jewelry were gone. Most of the shoes were too. Apparently, Brooks and Hoka brands are desired by the garage sale crowd. We still had a lot of things to sell, but most of the front lawn was now clear of goods. I was walking around with over five grand in my pocket, which made me feel a little unsafe. I wasn't surprised to read Deanne's texts begging me to stop selling her things. I texted back that her jewelry was gone. That got a you fucking asshole response, to which I responded, no, you were fucking an asshole. Three o'clock rolled around, but Beth and Kathy were still hawking the goods, so we went another 90 minutes before the traffic disappeared. We weren't planning on selling again on Saturday, so we just put stuff back in boxes and pushed them into the garage. Deanne's plane wasn't supposed to depart until after dinner, so she called several times from the airport. With a beer in my hand, I took one of the calls. Hey, Slutzilla, how'd the trip go? I'm sorry, was said softly. I imagine you are. Doesn't change my plans, though. What plans? I've moved out. Got an apartment close to work. But how can we work things out if you move? News flash. We're not working things out. You cheated. You got caught. Game over. Better luck next time. I could tell that Deanne was all choked up, but my desire to care had disappeared. I'm sorry, Chad. Will you be there when I get home? Nope. Not planning on ever setting foot in that house again. Kathy has your half of the garage sale proceeds. She's looking forward to your call as I think she has a few choice words lined up to pound you with. Oh God. I've really made a mess of my life. No arguments from me. Guess what we had meant so little to you that it was easy to throw it away. Yours is not the only life messed up. I shared the picture I gave to your parents with David's wife. I'd run if you see her coming your way. Just whimpers for about a minute. Feeling her suffer was soothing to my so-called frail male ego. Petty, I know, but still. My heart had been shredded when the first folder of incriminating pictures were delivered by the investigators. She was so arrogant and sure of herself that I was clueless that it only took two days for me to end the quite expensive intel gathering. Deanne broke the silence. Divorce? Duh, of course. What did you expect would happen? I didn't think it through. 
It was only ever on the road. Oh, well, excuse me for overreacting then. I deserve that. What's going to happen with the house? You can buy me out or we can sell. That's how it normally goes. All of my memories are now tainted, so I'm glad to be gone already. Can we still be friends? Not likely. Maybe in 50 years at the old folks' home. I'm sorry. Yeah, you've already said that. My plane is boarding. You're not planning on picking me up this time, are you? Nope. Hope your luggage doesn't get lost. Hate to see you lose all those special things you wore for David. I love you. Whatever, as I ended the call. Epilogue. By the following Tuesday, the divorce papers were served on Deanne at her office, of course. David was served with the equivalent of an alienation of affection suit at the same time. I was wasting my money on that one, but it got the desired effect. All I had were pictures of them entering his room at night and not emerging until the following morning. Can't prove that they were having sex, but both were removed from the merger team. I think their chances of moving up in that company were for the most part toast. Even though I had Deanne's garage sale instructions, my attorney warned me that a judge might not see it my way. Hey, there's always a chance, and even if I have to reimburse her, the originals were gone along with any fond memories near and dear to her. As it turned out, the judge would only require me to repay the things that Deanne could prove were hers alone. No paper trail, so sorry. Didn't cost me that much after all. It hurts. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. I'll get by. I've got a lot of baggage and severe trust issues. However, life has dealt a lot of other good people worse hands than mine. Write your opinion in the comments. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Remember, you're writing a story too, and it's up to you whether it's a good one or not.